What's up everyone, welcome to another video. At the beginning of this year, I posted a home office setup tour video, and since then there's been a ton of changes around here. So I figured it only made sense to post another video just to kind of show you what's changed and how the office is looking. As always, I will leave a link in the description with all of the items that I talk about today. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you find a little bit of inspiration for your own home office setup. Let's get right into it, starting with the desk setup. So nothing about the desk itself has changed. I'm still using the 74 inch Salgen countertop from Ikea. The desk legs are a pair of standing desk legs from FlexiSpot. As you can tell here, I use them in sit mode only because I'm lazy, but regardless, they're a nice, simple, and I would say pretty cheap pair of standing desk legs. Now something new that I did add to this setup is this Husky workbench table to the left of me. This is one of the items that I brought home from my studio when I moved out of it, and I really wanted an L-shaped desk in my home office, and this was just the closest thing to the countertop as far as the style and wood color, and it was a perfect fit to go right here without it taking up too much space in the room. It's 46 inches wide by 24 inches deep, and the way I have it set up, it basically gives me 24 extra inches to my desk setup, which is nice because sometimes I use it to have my laptop here or sometimes I build my camera here. It's a useful area to have whenever I need it. It's also home to the workstation of this setup, which is the Mac Studio. This is the Mac Studio M1 Max with 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. This is the base model that I got on release day. I have a full review video of this if you're interested, but I love this system. It's worked great for me this year, and I also have it paired with a 48 terabyte OWC Thunder Bay 8 hard drive array. This is a 48 terabyte RAID setup that holds all of my projects, all of my data for the year. It's a beast of a hard drive array. It's very expensive, but worth the investment for sure because I know all of my projects are going to be protected in the event of a hard drive crash. Now, if there's one thing that sucks about having an array like this is that it is pretty noisy because of the fans and obviously the eight hard drives that are running in it. So it is nice to be able to set this away from my setup, at least a couple extra feet, which just gets rid of a little bit more of that noise so that it's not as distracting when I'm trying to work. Now moving over to the monitor, or should I say monitors. This is a bit of an aggressive upgrade since the last time you saw this setup. And yes, before you ask, there is a link in the description to download the wallpaper. Just please, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. The middle display and my main display is the BenQ PD3205U Design View Monitor. To the right of that is the 27 inch version of the same monitor, and to the left we have my LG Ultrafine 4K monitor. The BenQ monitors are IPS displays with 4K resolution and HDR10, and they come Kalman calibrated, which basically means they're factory calibrated at an industry level, so I know I'm getting a super accurate image out of both of these monitors. Moving to the left side of the desk, we have my 27 inch LG 4K ultrafine display. This monitor has been included in most of my desk setup videos over the years. If you're looking for a great monitor for under $500, I can't recommend this enough. LG always makes a great display and I've had zero issues with this over the years. The way I use these monitors is very simple. The middle display is my primary where I do all of my video editing. The monitor on the right has a clean feed to the video that I'm editing so I can get a nice big display and preview it when I'm editing. And then the left monitor is simply just a free monitor for me to have client notes up, to check emails, or even watch TV on it. Both BenQ monitors are identically calibrated to each other, so I know whatever videos or photos I'm editing are going to look the same across both. And then the LG monitor, I have visually calibrated it to these, but it's not really a big deal if it's off because I'm not using it for anything essential. You can see that the monitors on the left and right side are kind of sitting behind the 32 inch in the middle. And the reason for that is so that way I could get these a little bit further back and so I didn't have to turn my head left or right quite as much to view them. The plus side, the monitors are set in a way that makes it extremely functional. The downside, it doesn't really look good for Instagram. It may not be the most visually appealing setup, but it's extremely functional and practical for what I need it for. And at the end of the day, that's why I have a desk set up because I need to get work done, even though I wanna set it up just for Instagram likes. Okay, moving on to the BenQ screen bar that's above my monitor. 
BenQ recently updated this to make it even better than before. The screen bar basically illuminates the whole front of your desk without the annoying glare that you would get from a traditional lamp. They also added a light to the back of it, so you get a nice kick of light behind the monitor which helps with eye strain when you're working in darker environments. And one of my favorite things about this new screen bar is it comes with a wireless control. It's a hockey puck design where you can control your brightness settings, your color temperature settings from 6500 Kelvin down to 2700 Kelvin, and a few other nice features within that. To illuminate the rest of the setup, I use Philips Hue lighting, but I'll get back into that later in this video and discuss it in more detail. Directly below my monitors are my speakers from Edifier. These are the S2000 Pros, and they're a great set of speakers that pack a punch they're not proper studio reference monitors, so they're not quite as flat as something like that, but I really don't care because I use these for casual listening or just editing the audio in my videos, and they definitely get the job done for me. When I bought the Mac Studio, I also bought the newest Apple Magic Keyboard. I just felt it would be better to have something a little more integrated with that system. It is pricey being an Apple product, but it looks really nice, it's built really well, and having things like the Touch ID on the keyboard makes it a little more convenient to log into the computer. It's a great keyboard and I think it pairs really well with the rest of the setup. For my mouse, I'm still using the Logitech MX Master 3. I think this mouse has a great fit for almost anybody's needs. Whether you're a video editor, doing remote sales, a graphic designer, a music producer, this mouse is going to pair well with your setup. Two accessories I have on my desk are the Orbit Key desk mat and the Grove Made desk shelf. I've had these for a few years now and I love what they add to my setup. Whether you're using it for storage or setting a monitor on top of it like I do, a desk shelf is a really simple way to add layers to your setup. And using a desk mat not only serves as a functional purpose by acting as a mouse pad, it also creates a nice contrast with whatever surface you're using for your desk. The chair I'm using is the Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro. It has a nice adjustable headrest, great lumbar support, and the back is mesh, so it's extremely breathable. The only downside I would say about this chair is the cushion. It is a thick cushion, but you can pretty much touch the bottom of it by just using your hand. I feel like every time I sit down on this, I can feel the bottom of the chair, and it's not uncomfortable necessarily, but I can tell that maybe in another year of use, this might become an issue. But overall, I love this chair. I think the design looks very nice, and it is still very comfortable. Okay, now let's talk about my cable management. My cable management kind of sucks. I do the best I can, but honestly, it's really difficult to properly cable manage a setup like this. Under the desk, I have a cable tray from Vivo, and behind that, I have these plastic cable runners. I basically use the Vivo tray to hide everything that's behind that, and I think it does a pretty good job. There's, of course, a couple cables sticking out here and there, but I also don't have the patience to get every single cable perfectly hidden. So, this is what you get here. I think it's pretty decent. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments about my cable management. One very crucial thing that I added to this setup and something that I think more people should have for their desk setups is a battery backup. This is a battery backup from APC and basically what it does is in the event that there's a power outage, it'll power my entire setup for a certain amount of time and it also triggers my computer, lets it know that there's no power and my computer will safely turn off without being forcefully turned off which can lead to hardware failure. I was years overdue for buying something like this, but after I got my 48 terabyte hard drive array, I figured it was the best time to make sure everything was protected. One of the downsides to a battery backup is that it's kind of big and looks ugly, so luckily for me, I was able to place my mini fridge at the bottom of my Husky workbench and then place the battery backup behind that. So now not only do I hide the battery backup, I'm also able to hide all of the ugly cables that are running to it. And all right, now let's move over to my gaming and entertainment center setup. This is honestly my favorite addition to the home office this year. I put a lot of time into making it what it is and I've had a lot of fun with it. So let's get right into it. Starting with what's on the wall, I have these 12 by 12 self-adhesive acoustic panel tiles that I got off of Amazon. The black accent wall is great, but it was starting to feel a little bland. So I'm glad that I was able to add a little bit of texture to this area. Besides editing, most of my time spent in my home office is watching TV or playing video games. So one of my favorite upgrades to the home office this year is the 48 inch LG C1 OLED. I could go on and on about how amazing this TV is, but an OLED is just a completely different viewing experience in general. It has a million to one contrast ratio, so all of the blacks and dark areas of the image are absolutely pure. Dolby Vision makes watching movies and TV shows feel that much more cinematic. 
And this TV also supports 4K at 120 hertz, so playing video games at 120 hertz makes it feel much more like you're playing on a gaming monitor. The image on this TV looks so incredible that I find myself just turning on the screensaver on the Apple TV just so I can stare at the screen. I currently use the latest Apple TV for viewing most of my content. It has every single app that I need on here, and what I love the most about it is that I can connect my AirPods and watch TV at night without disrupting my wife in the other room. And when I have those AirPods in, I can turn on spatial audio so it feels like I'm still listening without wearing headphones, and it tracks the position of my head so it really feels like the audio is coming from the TV. Wearing AirPods is great, but sometimes I want the audio to literally shake the room. So I got this 5.1 soundbar from Vizio that has a wireless subwoofer and surround sound. This was one of the best soundbars that I could find with surround sound for under $300. The speakers sound very crisp, well balanced, and the subwoofer is incredibly powerful. If you want the surround sound experience but can't really budget to get a full home theater setup, then I think getting a soundbar with surround sound and a subwoofer is going to be the best bang for your buck. The surround sound not only sounds amazing when watching movies and TV shows, but it also sounds awesome when I'm gaming. Another new addition to the home office is the Xbox Series X. This thing paired with the OLED is absolutely insane. The OLED supports up to 120 hertz, so playing games like Forza Horizon or a first person shooter like Modern Warfare is so fun when you're playing on a setup like this. Both the Xbox and the soundbar are sitting on this TV stand that I got from Wayfair. And to the left of this is a brand new lamp that I picked up. In this lamp is a Philips Hue bulb, and the Hue system is how I light my entire home office. I love how easy it is to create a vibe in a room by adding a couple light strips or bulbs to that room. They are definitely on the pricey side and there are a lot of great cheap alternatives, but I've just found that Philips Hue and the app itself are just a lot easier to use and it's a lot more stable than some of the other apps that I've tried in the past. I also recently added this wireless remote, so that way I can easily turn on and off the lights when I'm entering and exiting the room because before it was a bit annoying having to pull out my phone just to turn the light on real quick to grab something. The couch in here is different from the last video that I posted, and this is a couch that I brought home from my studio when I moved out, and this couch is from CB2. This is like a $1,600 couch that I got on Facebook Marketplace for about $400. It was almost brand new, and it's super comfortable, and I feel like it just fits perfectly in this space. Hanging above the couch is this canvas that I got from Iconic, and to the right of that, is a light strip from Govi that I honestly don't really use that much anymore now that I have this lamp in front of the TV, but it's still nice to have there just in case. And next to that is this floating wall shelf, which in my last video I said that I wasn't able to find the exact one because I bought it at Home Goods a few years back, but a lot of people in the comments said to just search for a diamond shelf or a three tier geometric shelf and you should be able to find it online. I'll leave a link in the description to something similar, but just a disclaimer, it's not the actual one that I have here. And that is my home office setup for the end of 2022. Going into 2023, it will change again, of course, but I really am happy with where it's at and how it's evolved this year. Everything that I've added to this space is really a reflection of my personality, the things I enjoy, the work that I do, and it's just a really cool spot to get to work in every single day. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you found a little bit of inspiration for your own home office setups. Again, I'll leave a link in the description with all of the items that I talked about today. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and say what's up in the comments. I will see you all in the next video, which should hopefully be in a couple days. Later.